Joining our next guest, who is with us right now, Richard Goose Gossage is with us here on 97.3 The Fan. Goose, it is great to have you on with Ben and Woods. Good morning to you. Here and great to be with the, some of the old boys and uh, hanging out at camp and and just great to be back here uh, in a baseball unit. I know a lot of people are growing their mustache in honor of Peter Seidler. I believe you've already had yours for a yeah, while. Yeah, that's kind of kind of standard. <laughs> well, you know, everybody thinks I bought I I grew this thing to be more intimidating. I actually grew it to piss Steinbrenner off. So, <laughs> you know, because we couldn't do it and. Uh, <laughs> You know, I'm the only guy to ever get away with it, so I don't know. Good timing, is, you know, two kinds of timing. Yeah, so it was so mustaches were allowed with the Yankees, but yours kind of uh, well, the what, line they of... weren't. They were allowed, but they weren't allowed past the corner right. of your mouth. And uh, so I was dumb. having a great year in '81, and I I grew a of a full beard, and I showed up in camp with a full beard. And Yogi Berra, the great Yogi Berra. Uh, Mr. Steinbrenner had him in charge of hair, <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, the next thing I know, I'm hanging my stuff up, reporting to camp, and I I just thought I'd bust their, everybody's chops and show up with grew a beard yeah. in the off season out in Colorado, and so I'm hanging my stuff up, and there's Yogi sitting behind me going, hey. He goes, you got to shave that crap off. He goes, George is going to kick my ass. Yeah. Get in there and shave that shit off. <laughs> so I go in and shave this off, and I just kept the Fu Manchu just to bust. I knew I wasn't even going to keep a mustache. Yeah. And I kept this big old Fu Manchu. I knew I was I was just busting Yogi's chops. Yeah. So the next thing, Yogi's at my locker going, it's going to be cut right here. <laughs> George is going to kick my ass. Get in there and shave that shit off. Oh, okay, oh, okay. okay. I got I got I got I got I got to remind you Goose, we're on live radio. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, okay. we get Sorry. the one, the we, seven, get, we get to dump it, but you're going to have to be on your Sorry. best behavior, which okay. I know can be difficult. You guys should have warned me. I know. Sorry. I know. Sorry. But it's not fault. this is not on you guys. It's on us. This is recorded. It's on us. We, we needed sat somebody, right down. We needed so. somebody here that wasn't on hair but was on yeah. language. Yeah. That's what we needed. That's our fault. So, we will uh we'll just attach you to some electrodes and you say anything wrong you'll get an electric shock I, I or got, something well, you, you uh I goose probably God, deserve it goose gosh <clears throat> joins the program right now you walked in yesterday grand entrance and uh <clears throat> everybody was super excited to see you uh you're and i know you've done you'd said some fantasy camps with the yankees and stuff but being back with the Padres, how's that feel meet all the guys and, and see everybody out here out well, here grinding i think the first thing i said when i greeted the the campers and and all of my buddies all the coaches uh all the legends, uh, whatever they're calling us. Um, I said one of the greatest thrills of my career was turning on a city in 84 and seeing and being part of that. And, uh, you know, we were the two pieces of the puzzle, myself, uh, reliever, and then Greg Nettles. We need, they needed a third baseman and gosh, we both left the Yankees and, and, uh, ended up with the pods and and those two pieces of the puzzle were the final pieces. So that was one of the great thrills of my life was in my career was uh, turning, being part of that and turning on a city and seeing, seeing a city just go crazy. And I can tell you from a fan's perspective, because I grew up in San Diego as a Padres fan and I was, um, I was nine years old in 1984. And I remember the feeling I was at game five of the NLCS against the Cubs with my dad and I remember after the win, uh, listening just the horns honking throughout San Diego. It was something I had never oh. experienced before. You know, uh, just growing up, there wasn't much to cheer for sports-wise. Uh, you know, we had the Clippers. They were terrible. I used to go to games. They were awful. Uh, the Padres hadn't been very good my entire life. And then 84, it was just a completely different feeling. And yeah. to get to experience that and what you guys were able to do. And uh, some of your other coaches here were on the team, like, like Flan. Uh, it was it was life changing for me as a fan. It probably got me into baseball as a fan for life because of that season. Sure, sure. Um, you know, again, I've had so many great things happen to me in my career. I look back at it and I just am in total awe of of the way my career went. You know, all I wanted to do when I started out was put a big league you know uniform on one time, and it turns into twenty two years and. And then an election to the Hall of Fame and all the other stuff, plaque and in Monument Park at Yankee Stadium, and and then being part of this, the Padres. You know, I I love the old uniforms. I love that uh, 
crappy gray or the crappy brown, <laughs> brown stuff, you know. Orange. And, and uh, uh, so I love those uniforms. And when we went to the new pinstripe, I think Garve took those out, which was really boring. But uh, we got on here because I think he had a lot to do with that. But uh, anyway, it was Garve was great. Uh, I played with the greatest shortstop that I ever played with was Gary Templeton. And what a what a guy he is, and all these guys are just terrific individuals. And and uh, you know the the one thing, nothing was going to face, nothing was going to replace me facing that hitter uh, when he stepped in the box when I was on that bound. But the second thing that I think all of us missed was the camaraderie. Uh, you know, uh, being with the guys. Yeah, being yeah. with the guys, and and not and then not being with the guys. You know, not going to spring training yeah. was weird after 25 years of going to camp. You know, so. Uh, it's great to be back. Um, the campers are great. Um, you know, wannabes, whatever you want to call <laughs> yeah. them. Uh, and we try to give them that experience, you know, and you got, you do chew a great them job. out, yell at yeah. them, you know. Trade get, them. I just got <laughs> traded. Yeah. Yeah. I just got yeah, traded. Just got yeah. traded. Yeah. yeah. Well, tough. Uh, tough business. You know, I got, hey, people go, who'd you play for? I said, I, it'd be easier to tell you who I didn't play <laughs> for. So. You know, I played for nine different teams and being a free agent a few times and traded a couple times. And and uh, so I enjoyed every minute I played. I uh, awesome. even played in Japan. Every, yeah. every team I went yeah. to Japan, I got the opportunity to go there. What a great experience that was. Uh, fabulous. And then came back and played four more years here in the States. It's incredible. So, I, wanted, I wanted to ask you, we were just talking about you, too. We're talk, talking to a Hall of Famer, Goose Gossage, here on Ben and Woods this morning. Loving loving all these these stories. Um, we want to talk about how the, the position that you played, it's changed. It's changed. And I know the game has changed a lot. I know you have opinions about it. I've heard your opinions oh. about it. But I wanted to ask you. So <laughs> we were kind of kicking around the idea. And I know the players take a lot of grief for it. Oh, they're not tough or they're not as tough as we were or whatever, whatever it is. Do you put any responsibility on some of the organizations for – maybe coddling them a little bit when you were coming up, were you, cause they, he, he, they look at your arm goose thing. Like this dude throws, he, he throws a hundred miles an hour. We got to protect him a little bit. It was, felt like the office and they're running you out there for two and three innings. Was that a, did you demand that or did, did you force your way into that? Or was, was that the organization as well? They don't want our knowledge. They don't. If it doesn't come out of the computer, they don't want it. They, they wouldn't understand it. If it came, if I talked to them, but how did but you? they do? They run their rotisserie leagues at Harvard and Yale, and they're brainiac kids, right? Yeah. And now they're all gym, general managers, right? Because they think they can, whatever. Nothing important comes out of that. And everything is in the human element, okay? In terms of heart and down there, okay? <laughs> and uh, so, you know, that's that's what they're missing. I tell players today, every player I can I see. Don't let the pussies turn you oh. into pussies. <laughs> so, but but for you, when you play, did you demand the ball? Did you demand Absolutely. the ball for as as long as you would go? Oh, you know, we starters got in trouble, and then I came in the game. Close it. Um, and you know what they've done is now I would buy into the to the with the injuries and stuff. Sure, less injuries, less work. Uh, more work, more injuries. Well, it's the opposite. Less work. There are more injuries, more injuries today than there ever have been. So these these no windups are killing these pitchers. Uh, they're not incorporating the big muscles to to pitch in. Knowledge. They don't want. I didn't invent this game, you guys. Right. I got taught it from A to Z. That is the single most important thing that is missing in the game today. Is that torch that was passed for a hundred years from generation to generation to generation has stopped being passed. They don't want me to pass that torch and tell these kids how to act like a bunch of fools or, or just respect the game. Sure. That's all. Sure. Bottom line is these general managers and these people running this game today do not respect it. I uh, and I'll, wouldn't know if a baseball hit him in the, we get him you, know what. All right. no, right. yeah. you know what? I love this. We can go with, you know what? <laughs> So I wanted to ask you, though, because one thing that we've seen a lot out of relief pitchers nowadays is they ask a guy, hey, we want 
110% for one inning. We don't want you to leave anything in the tank because you're just pitching those three batters. You're coming out. Did you, when you knew you were coming into the seventh inning and they're going to want you to finish out that game, did you pace? Did you have to pace yourself at all, knowing Hell no. you were all 100% even for three innings? Okay. It was to the wall, all baby. All the way. All, all three, all yeah. ten batters, however many you faced. There was nothing. You weren't Both thinking, to the wall. hey, okay, I'll, I'll back off for this guy a little bit. I know I'm going to need a little more for the next day. It was no, like, no. all the way out no, every time. I, I threw every pitch like it was going to be my last. Okay. Every time I went out there. I love yep. it, man. I can't and, argue with that. I and wound that. up and incorporated the big muscles, and I pitched 25 years professionally without anything. So – uh, these kids, this no wind up that Tommy House has brought that, that, that incorporated. Here's the theory behind it the less you do, the less you can that goes wrong. Sure, okay. Shorten up your delivery, shorten up a golf swing. What do you do? You got to chip, okay. Now you got to take the club back and swing it. Yeah, you got to pitch it too. You got to wind up and throw it, get some momentum going into home plate. These guys are starting from a dead standstill. I'd buy into the I'd buy into the pitch counts. Why would I stick a number in your head? True. It's debilitating. That's all they think about. I saw it with the Yankees. I was a special instructor with the Yankees for 20 years yeah. under Mr. Steinbrenner. And that was an owner right there. And and I would listen to these kids when they first started giving these pitch counts. The first thing they ask when they come off the mound is how many pitches do I have? <laughs> if I'd asked that pitch, if I'd asked that, they'd have said, son, you get your butt out there on that mound and you pitch. And when you get tired, we will come and get you. But but, but I can't use the language that they right. would have told me. <laughs> right. Right. Now, I, I loved watching the game growing up, but I also love watching the game now. Is it is it fair? Is but there, you're is seeing, there, you're you, seeing for what it is. Home run goes over the fence. That's a home run. That's all. 60 feet, 6 inches. The mound. That's There is nothing in this game today that is what it was for 100 years. They have taken this. They have, to me, I don't even, I can't even watch it. Really? At all? You know, I, put, I watch the playoffs. Yeah. You get the best team. Do you not feel like the level of athleticism, when you see a guy like Tatis and the no, ground that he covers? No, I don't you, think so. You don't think there's you know, more of that in this day? Okay. Guys this, are getting flashier. Yeah. We had flashy guys. That you did. That's, but, yeah. But, yeah that's, no but, one ever remembers nobody the remembers flashy guys. But they didn't want to, you know, they didn't overdo it. Well, there now wasn't it's as, all about flashy. There wasn't as much exposure. Just get the job done. How about get them on, get them over, get them in? The real beauty of the game gone something that we're missing here at fantasy Strat- camp goose yeah I'm, I'm just saying <laughs> you know strategy no strategy in the game hit it over the fence strike out 250 times no big deal i knew what we were going to get i yeah, knew no. it and it's well, still wild asked. to sit here you and asked. see it no. it's, it's just like our it's just like our government too look at all the things that are upside down in our in our world for sure and baseball's part of it it is it, it's I, the I, same I, it's the same if it doesn't come out of that computer and let me tell you something. You tell me, you guys tell me one thing that these nerds, I said it's the revenge of the nerds. What have the nerds brought to the table that has made the game better? What? Replay sucks. They let the umpires do the job for 100 years and did a great job. Now they're, now they're trying to control something that is un controllable that's what they don't know you can't control this game I'm gonna drive it crazy. is beautiful i like the pitch clock it is oh. <laughs> well they yeah absolutely <laughs> they it, need it they needed we, it we, made me feel like you're watching games they when i was younger yeah. yes get, they the did. Mat, get on the mound Trouble. as a pitcher let me tell you something as a pitcher <laughs> The, the more strikes you throw and the faster you work, the better plays those guys make behind all day. you. All They're day, on their day. toes. You're, these guys are putting them to sleep. They're, they hit it a ball the and these guys better. are like... I think it makes the game better. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Well, because <laughs> what what does? The the pitch pitch clock. They had to bring well, it yeah, back. They had to do <laughs> they it. They had to do Our it. Our favorite saying was, we don't get paid for overtime. <laughs> Let's get this thing over with. <laughs> you, you, and didn't go have a beer. you didn't need and a pitch clock. And go have a beer. No, we didn't. And then these guys shouldn't need it either. Holy crap. But nobody's passing that torch, big boy. He's pointing at You're me You're a nerd, too, aren't you? I can, tell, I, can tell the, I can tell the questions you're asking. You're a nerd, too. I am. I am undoubtedly so there, a nerd. You don't know any more than but these guys I don't do. get to make any decisions. I got to go. I, all right. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the language. I, I was wondering when he realized.